Hi everybody, this is Dr. Britt Talley, Daniel MD, neurologist, genetic doctor. And today I'm talking about lifestyle issues for migraine prevention. Well, migraine is a genetic neurological condition that has a strong familial link. 12% of the world's population has migraine, and women have it three times more than men do. Migraine is the most frequent medical condition for women, and it comes with the menstrual cycle in over half of women. Migraine is the seventh most disabling condition among all diseases and the leading cause of disability among all neurological disorders. Persons with migraine need to learn how to treat it, yet studies show that 56% of persons who have migraine have never been given a medical diagnosis by a doctor. Could migraine be improved by paying close attention to lifestyle issues? Well, this is a question with a certain answer. So lifestyle issues for migraine prevention. Lifestyle issues for migraine are important and should be performed by all persons with migraine. The lifestyle suggestions I'm gonna list below don't just help migraine, they also improve general health and longevity. The treatment for migraine is, in general, doing the lifestyle Finding an acute therapy medication to take it on instead of a headache, and that's usually a tryptin, and then using a preventive medication for migraine patients who have frequent attacks. That's how you treat migraine. And the first basic idea is to do the lifestyle. And these ideas are basic, they are dogma in the headache area, and like, they gotta be done. So related issues. Caffeine is a double-edged sword. Most persons like to drink caffeine, although it's an addictive drug, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, version 5, drinking caffeine can be a very pleasant experience for most people. The problem is that caffeine is a vasoconstrictor and can aggravate migraine or give medication of his headache if too much is used. This use issue is especially important to persons with migraine. The American Headache Society has stated that caffeine is the number one drug uh, that's uh, causes an increased intensity and frequency of migraine. How about that? Caffeine use is confusing because many persons know that caffeine may be used to treat headache, it's usually mild migraine patients, but they also need to learn if it's taken frequently or more than two days a week, it can cause medication over use headache, which used to be called rebound headache. As a neurologist and headache doctor, I know that many people with migraine do drink some caffeine and get by with it and probably do okay, but it's the slow, sneaky, addictive quality of the drug that bothers me as a doctor. I think bothers many of my migraine patients. So overall, I advise migraine patients to not drink caffeine. Diet issues. Avoid fasting or missing a meal. A small breakfast will suffice, but usually for mostly young women who fill the offices of neurologic headache doctors all over the world, the advice to eat breakfast will be met by a vacant stare and denial many times. Did you know that the word breakfast means to break the fasting of sleep? That's what the word means. If you don't eat and without your knowing it, your pituitary gland will sense your low blood sugar and send out a hormonal signal that would cause vasodilatation of your cerebral arteries and start your hungry headache migraine. Three meals a day is advised by all medically accepted weight loss programs such as Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers. But my experience is that most mothers will feed their children three meals a day, but not themselves. Exercise. The American Heart Association has recommendations for adults, and here it is, straight copy and paste from the AHA website. Recommendation for adults, get at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic exercise, or 75 minutes per week of vigorous aerobic activity, or a combination of both, preferably spread throughout the week. Add moderate to high intensity muscle strengthening activities, such as resistance or weights, on at least two days a week. Spend less time sitting. Even light intensity activity can offset some of the risk of being sedentary. Gain even more benefits by being active at least 300 minutes or five hours per week. Increase the amount of intensity that you exercise gradually over time. These above ideas are recommendations for general health, but you know that one may improve migraine 
anxiety, panic disorder, depression, tension type headache and sleep problems with aerobic exercise. There are hundreds of scientific articles over the past years proving that exercise works for headache therapy. And aerobic exercise is dance aerobics, jogging, cycling, swimming, rowing, cross-country skiing, and stair-stepping. The idea is you have to get your heart a certain rate according to your age. It is not generally walking, although a lot of people walk or exercise. It's not lifting weights alone or stretching or playing most games, even like tennis or racquetball, because your heart doesn't stay beating regularly. If you're already exercising and still have bad headaches, consider increasing your exercise program. Exercise is something you can do yourself to take care of your, and control your headaches. It takes determination, time, and effort. Overweight can increase frequent migraine headaches. Some migraine patients get a workout headache if they get hot. If this happens to you, then try to work out so you don't get hot. Exercise in front of a fan or in air conditioning. You can take a little ibuprofen, etc., and half of a tryptin before you work out, remembering to limit all painkillers and tryptins to more than two days per week. But if you still get a workout headache, then swim. That stays, body temperature stays good and low. The next issue is adequate sleep. Migraine patients also often don't sleep well. 50% of migraine patients are depressed and 40% have generalized anxiety disorder, both of which have insomnia is one of their cardinal symptoms. Regulate your sleep, <coughs> excuse me, set your sleep-wake cycle to rise and go to sleep at the same time every day, even through the weekend. Adults should sleep between seven to eight hours every night. Wake up early on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Migraine can be treated by sleep restriction. Avoid oversleeping Saturday morning or falling asleep for that seductive two-hour nap on Sunday afternoon. Set an alarm for a 10-15 minute short energy restoring nap. If you've never learned how to take a short nap, then learn. It can be done. There are stages of sleep. Most persons with migraine only get to a light stage of sleep at night and not deep sleep. Too much sleep or not enough sleep can set off a migraine. Unwind at the end of the day. Listen to soothing music. Take a warm bath. Read a favorite book. Hard exercise, big meals, caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol can interfere with sleep. Minimize distractions. Save your bedroom for sleep and intimacy. Don't watch television or take work materials to bed. Close your bedroom door, use a pan to muffle distracting noises. Be sure that none of your medications can interfere with sleep. Look up all your drugs on the internet and see if they cause trouble sleeping. Talk it over with your doctor. Dealing with stress. Many patients I've talked to deny they have any stress. Talking to them is like, it's somebody else's problem but not mine. They either don't understand what stress is or are willing to discuss it with a regular non-psychiatric non physician. But these are the stressful events in life. Change of environment, leaving home to go to school or start a new job, death, accident or major illness of a parent, grandparent, sibling, close friend, spouse, or sweetheart, birth of a new child, loss of a job, starting a new job, financial stress, mortgage is due, old bills, unexpected financial responsibilities. We all go through these things all the time. They're the ebb and flow of our lives. Therefore, learn to talk over your daily life problems with your spouse, friends, family, preacher, priest, or rabbi. Develop a support system to sustain you in life, built up of key persons um, that you can talk to that are there for you when you need them. Plan time to relax and spend on hobbies or interests. Normal people have hobbies, which is something you do for fun and relaxation that's creative but not goal or money making oriented. Children and family are not hobbies. Please look up the word hobby in the dictionary if you think this. Turn off that cell phone, computer, or iPad and get a life. Plan three day weekends several times a year rather than just one two week holiday in August. Leave that depressing stressful job or get counseling and try to change a personal relationship that is causing problems. Try avoiding Oh, deep, use deep reading to help you calm down. You can try family or personal counseling or learn CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. See my Dr. Migraine 
dot com articles on depression, anxiety, sleep, and CBT, and you can learn about those. Avoid overtreatment with medication. Don't take too much caffeine, over-the-counter drugs, triptans, or painkillers for headache. In general, all migraine patients should limit all such drugs to no more than two days per week. The migraine process generates neurochemicals which are released in the brain and that inflame the thalamus, trigeminal nerve, and the cerebral arteries. These neurochemicals stay in the body three days, and once they inflame the brain, they are repeatedly released every time other painkillers like caffeine or Adderall or something like that are consumed, starting a process of continuous headache. It's like putting kerosene on a burning fire. It just keeps going as long as you put kerosene on there. I once saw a man who told me he'd been taking 10 Excedrin migraine pills for over 50 years. So that's 10 times 65 milligrams. That's 650 milligrams of caffeine a day. And he had a headache all that time until I convinced him to stop Excedrin. Then his headaches cleared up. There's no data that open narcotics help migraine headache and they just cause problems and shouldn't be used for rescue treatment. The U.S. is now going through a change in the use of open narcotics and barbiturate drugs since they cause people to die in their sleep. They're addictive and cause medication of his headache. Narcotics should be used never or just for, only for persons who are in severe pain and nearly the end of life for acute trauma or for surgery only for a short period of time and then stopped. Death from opiate narcotic is a big problem now in America. Utalitol found in Fioranol, S-Jack, Fioracet, has been banned in every country in the world except in Canada and the United States because it causes medication use headache. The word narcotic comes from the Greek word meaning to sleep in Texas. The number one reason for the state medical board to restrict a physician's uh, doctoring or medications that they're given concerns their use of opiate medications and more licenses are restricted or revoked regarding this issue of using narcotic, narcotic, license, narcotic medicines and any other issue. We should avoid food triggers. People with migraine may have their own individual foods that seem to set off their headaches and the subject of food triggers is a controversial, sterile, still poorly researched subject. Common food triggers are alcohol, chocolate, aged cheeses, MSG, and red wine. If you know certain foods are a problem for you, don't eat them. See my article on food triggered migraine at drmigraine.com. Eat regular balanced meals, basing your diet primarily on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, and healthy fats, and limiting foods that trigger an attack. is a good way to prevent migraines and our headaches also. And don't skip meals. Skipping meals makes you hungry, which can trigger a migraine. We should avoid all known migraine triggers. Let me just give you a list for one doctor's report. Migraine triggers could be stress, hormones in women, not eating, weather, sleep disturbances, perfume or odors, neck pain, lights or glare, alcohol, smoke, smelling smoke, sleeping late, heat, food, exercise, sexual activity. The reference there is Kelman writing in the journal Cephalogy in 2007 on the triggers are precipitants of the acute migraine attack. An interesting thing is there is like food is way at the bottom of the list at 26 percent whereas stress is always at the top of the list here. 79 percent of people have that as a trigger. So the most common migraine trigger is stress. You can check very much your pressure changes that aggravate migraines. I think there are scientific articles verifying this now, that migraine attacks occur with changes in barometric pressure. Um, I think that's been established, but the reason for why the attacks occur and how the pressure affects the brain is really not well understood. Modern cell phones or computers can report current barometric pressure changes for where you live. If you get attacks with barometric pressure changes, then keep a pressure diary and watch out for a migraine that may occur then. Migraineurs may pre-treat with a tryptin if they think they're going to get an attack. So what do you do when a migraine starts? Well, treat early with a tryptin when a migraine starts. Find a cool, dark, quiet space. Get off TV or your cell phone. Rest your eyes. Relax. Deep breathing from your diaphragm can help you relax. Focus on inhaling and exhaling slowly. Think positively. Learn how to deal with a migraine interrupting your day. Learn CBT skills like it's not the end of the world 
It's just another migraine headache. Keep a migraine diary. There are a number of free cell phone apps for migraine. I have a blog post on that also on Dr. Migraine. Patients can plot their life issues, menstruation, weather change stress, missed meals, occurrence at night, or a wake-up headache. Study carefully any trigger that seems important and recurrent for you. Living with migraine is a daily challenge, but making healthy lifestyle choices can help. Ask your friends and loved ones for support. Pray to God for help with your life and your health. So this is the end of my talk on migraine lifestyles and how they can prevent migraine. Please click on subscribe down there so we can follow each other. God bless all your persons with migraine. And I will see you back on the next talk.